Hey everyone, Faisal Kamisa joined by Elliot Friedman and Chris Johnston. After the NHLPA put out a statement slightly before 10 p.m. Eastern on Friday night, it reads like this, quote, the executive board of the NHLPA has authorized further negotiations with the NHL on a 24-team return to play format to determine the winner of the 2020 Stanley Cup. Several details remain to be negotiated and an agreement on the format would still be subject to the parties reaching agreement on all issues relevant to resuming play and quo. The language in this, uh, a little bit confusing to me, and it seems to others as well. It reads, Elliot, as if the NHLPA has agreed to continue talking to the league about how and when to come back. But on the surface, this is probably good news, right? It is good news. It means that the players have voted to accept the 2014 uh, proposal that we've all been reporting for the last couple of days. What I think it means, Faisal and Chris can tell me if I'm insane, but what I think it means is that there are still tweaks about this that need to be finalized and the two sides have to work them out. And one of them, Chris, is something that you've been talking about a little bit, and that's what happens with the uh, four teams that don't have to be in the play-in round. It is, Elliot. And, and you know, the, the key thing I think the players want to, to look at is, you know, what was on the table was a bracketed format. And, you know, in the simplest possible terms, uh, because we don't have a good visual way to show this, you know, the number one seed uh, coming out of that play in round could potentially not play the lowest seed, uh, just the way a, a straight bracket works. I think, you know, one thing that, that the, the players would like to discuss with the league is maybe uh, using a seeding form, format so that, uh, if, say, Boston becomes the number one seed in the Eastern Conference, it guarantees they'll play the lowest seed uh, when the playoffs themselves start. But, you know, I, I do concur, Elliot, that this is still a significant step. You know, the fact the players have voted on 24 teams going in, but there's still a lot of details, even with the formula to be worked out, let alone some of the bigger issues that are still outstanding. So, Chris, what are some of those details that they'd still be trying to negotiate? And I imagine it's the league, sir, now to talk things over and, and think things think. think things through, excuse me, before uh, coming out with something of themselves. So what are some of the things they're going to be looking at over the next couple of days? Uh, this will be days and weeks, I think, because, you know, yeah. I, still still to be worked out is how the testing is going to work. I think precisely where the hub cities are, you know, what life is going to look like, you know, certain things like the, the players' visas and, and how those things are work because, you know, work visas that players have right now only go through June 30th. Um, you know, the critical dates calendar, we, we have players like, uh, the St. Louis Blues captain, Alex Petrangelo, who technically is due to be an unrestricted free agent as of July 1st. This is a playoff format if it goes forward that won't start until after that date. And so, you know, I think that some of those bigger logistical issues are actually probably far more significant to, in terms of a hurdle to overcome than this format itself. But, you know, I don't want to diminish uh, what's happened here because, you know, the, the, the thing with this 2014 format is you're always going to have certain teams that were built into it that wouldn't maybe like it for one reason or another. And so it was going to be a hard consensus building activity, but they managed to do it. Elliot, I know one of those teams uh, that was maybe reported or suggested that may not have liked the format. And I know I heard you and Sid Sixera postulating on this earlier on Tim and Sid might've been Pittsburgh. That's been uh, kind of refuted by Chris Latang as well. Do you think at least based on, his denial of that report that more teams than not were in approval of this, given the fact that they just want to find a way to get back to playing. I think so. I mean, like a lot of uh, stuff is leaked out about how it was the, the conference call last night between the players was uh, spirited to say the least. And Latang admitted that he said that, yes, there were some pretty honest opinions out there, but he said, that's what that forum is for, for everybody to say what they have to say. Um, I don't think this was ever in any danger of not passing, but I do think there were some people who wanted to get their opinions out there, who wanted to make themselves heard, particularly when it comes to how they feel that certain teams are getting the advantage of not having a great regular season. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't think there was ever a huge doubt it was going to pass. I do think some people had issues. And I think, you know, I think the one thing that everybody needs to remember here is that just because we have a playoff format doesn't or almost have a playoff format doesn't mean we're guaranteed to play like there are a lot of things yeah that have to happen still uh, do you think Elliot and I've read some of this with regards to soccer players in England some baseball players have come out and, and spoken as to why they're even trying to figure out how to play given the situation in the world right now do you think that in any case there'll be some players who refuse to play given the severity of what's going on in the world right now uh, I would bet that that's going to happen. Now, I, I think the biggest thing in, in Faisal, I always, like, uh, there. about a month ago, I was told about a guy who was definitely not going to play. 
And then I, I asked, would this person talk? And I was told no. And, you know, I checked back with that person the other day. Is that person still? And, well, you know, we've yeah. learned a little bit now. And, you know, I mean, like, it's going to be, it's going to be a bit of a, a leap of faith for everybody. Yeah. Right. But I don't think we're going to see training camps before July. I really do think that the earliest we're going to see camps is, is probably the beginning of July. And I mean, who knows what's going to happen between now and then are, are, are people going to be more comfortable with this? Are people going to be less comfortable with this? There's a lot that can change between now and then. Uh, one of the things when I was speaking to Michael Grange a couple of days ago with regard to the NBA's plans uh, to getting back to action, he said, you know, the bubble that they play in might be, the most sanitized place there is right now. So it might not be the worst case scenario for players wanting to get back. Chris, I know there are still a lot of unknowns and really not a lot of concrete details, but is there anything concrete at all when it comes to maybe uh, hub cities or uh, anything at least to, to go with that's concrete right now? I would say no. And you know, a key thing I think for everyone to understand is that, look, I mean, we, we expect Las Vegas, for example, to be one of the hub cities, but you know, there's no advantage at this point in time to the NHL uh, coming out and saying that I mean, because as Elliot's pointing out, even in a matter of six weeks or eight weeks, uh, things can change, you know, with the way the virus spreads or maybe the situation on the ground there. And so, you know, I think the league has tried to leave its options open. Uh, there's been a number of cities that have, have shown interest. I think that the league's done its due diligence and has an idea where it would like to go. And, and look, it's still waiting to find out if one of the places it can play is one of these Canadian cities that's under consideration, depending on where travel restrictions are. I think that the next, sort of thing we're looking for from the league is, is maybe an announcement on this playoff format, but also, you know, when the, the facilities will start to open and they can move to phase two of their return to play format. We know that the NBA team just started to do that. And I would think at some point here in the, in the relatively near future, uh, we're going to see that happen at the NHL teams. You know, Faisal, uh, there was a yeah. story tonight in the NBA by Adrian Wojnarowski and uh, that some of the teams in Toronto was one of them that are like have stricter situations are looking at can we avoid our players from having to do two quarantines yeah. and maybe go right to the hub? Yeah. And I'll tell you this: that will be a con that like I believe that if it happens in one league, it's been just talked about in yeah. another league. Yeah. And I do think, and I think Chris talked about this the other day: if you're somewhere where you have to cross maybe the border twice, or you're going to have to do a 14-day quarantine before you do anything, I really wonder how players are going to feel about that yeah exactly and, and just close to home a lot of the Toronto Raptors are back at their homes in the states right now although some are in Toronto we know at least with comes to the Leafs Austin Matthews and Freddie Anderson are in Arizona so there would be a two border crossing if they were supposed to reunite at their home city first and then go to the hub city Elliot this is good at least in terms of exposure for 77.4 percent of the teams 24 of 31 teams will be in the playoffs there are seven teams that will not be in the playoffs that you know, they were probably using this time to hype their fans up. When it comes to the draft, that was supposed to be in about a month from today. Is there anything in terms of plans for those seven teams in terms of how they can stay relevant with their fan bases right now? You know, I think that's a great question. I, I think it's an excellent point. And Eugene Melnick was on our Fan 590 flagship in uh, Toronto on Sunday with Roger Lajoie, and he talked exactly about that. Um, you know, one of the things I, I'm curious about, Faisal, is do we see a draft lottery in June? Now, the biggest argument against it is the teams will say, hey, if, if there's no playoffs or anything happens here, you just had a draft lottery without a bunch of teams that might have been eligible. Mm -hmm. And that's the biggest knock against it. But I think people would like to try to do something yeah. for those markets. And, yeah. and I also I heard that on the call the other night, there was conversation about what do we do with these seven teams over the next nine mm -hmm. months? Like, is there some way we can get them ice time or something like that? But it's a tough spot, Faisal. But, yeah. however, I do think a lot of their veteran players uh, really weren't that interested in playing. <laughs> Nine months off for a veteran player is, is not the bad thing if they find a way to stay into shape. I, I always end with this, so I will with the both of you, Chris. Anything else that the people should know with regards to what's going on right now? Well, it's a baby step, but uh, I think it's a good, good piece of news. And I, I like that they've done this. Honestly, this is just my opinion, but I think it gives people something to focus on, including the players who are now probably getting themselves into an extra degree of shape because this is starting to take at least some form in, in terms of what this could look like. 
yeah, we've seen the NBA players react positively to some of the reports over the last few days as well. I imagine NHL players will be doing the same thing. Elliot, same question, anything uh, with regards to details to be added? No, I don't think so. I think you've got everything we know at this point in time. <laughs> uh, guys, I said this to Michael Grange. I love seeing the beards get longer, but when they're gone, I know we'll be back. So I hope they're gone sooner than later. Uh, but until then, continue to stay safe and sane. And thanks so much for this, guys. Let's get Take free your razor. <laughs> <laughs> Not a chance.